Hello and thank you for joining us this evening for this BVNA webinar on ferocious fleas, which is kindly provided by Boehringer Ingelheim. I'm Charlotte Bullard, I'm BVNA's Education Manager and I will be hosting the webinar this evening. I'm very pleased to also be joined by Louise Patterson, one of BVNA's regional representatives, who joins me this evening as the session chair. Um, so this is a pre-recorded session followed by a discussion at the end. So if you should have any questions or comments, please pop these in the Q&A or the chat box functions, which you'll find within the webinar toolbar. So now I will hand over to Louise, who will introduce this evening's session and speaker. Over to you, Louise. Thank you. So hi, everybody. My name is Louise Patterson and I'm the BVNA Regional Representative for Northern Ireland. And tonight our speaker is going to be Sally Edith Bates. Sally qualified as a vet in 2005, and after 10 years in small animal clinical practice, she moved on to work in industry and is now a brand technical advisor at Boring, Boringer Ingelheim, providing veterinary expertise to the marketing team. So we'll hand over to Sally in the videos. Welcome to the Boringer Academy Parasite Webinar Series. In this introductory video, I'll discuss why parasite control is so important and give you an overview of what to expect from the webinar series. Before I start, I'd like to introduce myself. My name's Sally, I'm a vet and one of the brand technical advisors at Boehringer Ingelheim. Prior to this, I was in small animal practice for 10 years and so I know how common parasite problems are in practice and the challenges they present. Parasite control is of course important for pets, but we mustn't forget about the impact it can have on pet owners, the wider public and on the practice. For pets, parasites are a source of irritation and illness. Sometimes parasites can cause very severe illness, sometimes even resulting in the death of the pet. I'll go into more detail about the specific impact of each of the parasites in the upcoming webinars. For owners, parasite control is important because they want to protect their pet, their family and their home. Some parasites can cause or act as vectors for zoonotic disease and so parasite control is essential to protect human health. And finally, for practices, if pet owners understand the importance of parasite control, they're likely to be more compliant with their parasite treatment, driving business for the practice, and most importantly, resulting in healthy pets, which means, of course, help, um, happy owners. There are seven webinars in this series, we're going to be going through each of the different parasite species. So we have ferocious fleas, terrible ticks, rotten roundworms, treacherous tapeworms, lethal lungworms and monstrous mites. The final webinar is all about control considerations and will cover the factors to consider when choosing a parasite treatment for a particular situation. The webinars don't have to be watched in this sequence. You can watch them in any order you'd like, or you can pick and choose those that you're particularly interested in. All of the webinars are under 30 minutes long and are divided into three sections. In the first section, I'll be asking, what's the big deal? By looking at the problems caused by the parasite in animals and humans. In the second section, I'll look more closely at the parasite and its life cycle, as the life cycle is really important to understand when we're making recommendations about parasite control. The final section is all about helping owners to control parasites in their pet. So this section will include advice on the questions to ask to determine if a pet is at risk and what advice you should give owners about prevention and treatment. I hope you enjoy this Parasite webinar series and most importantly, I hope that it helps you support your clients in achieving optimum parasite control for their pets.
Welcome to the Bowringer Academy Parasite webinar series. Hopefully you've had a chance to watch the introductory video, which explains that there are seven different webinars in this series, which you can watch in any order you'd like. In today's webinar, we'll be discussing ferocious fleas. So we'll start this webinar by looking at what's the big deal about fleas? Nobody likes to see fleas on their pet, but there's a lot more to know about the problems that fleas can cause. We'll then look at the flea life cycle because understanding this really helps us when we're making recommendations about prevention and treatment. And we'll finish um, by going over the advice we can give owners about how to um, treat and prevent flea infestations. So what's the big deal? Well, fleas are a pet owner's number one parasite concern. And that's not unsurprising given how common they are. 28% of cats and 14% of dogs have fleas. And when a pet has a flea infestation, we know that this negatively affects the human animal bond. So what specific impacts do fleas have on dogs and cats? Well, of course, there's the irritation and itchiness that a flea bite can cause. But some pets have an allergy to the flea saliva, and this can cause even more severe irritation, often leading to more extensive skin damage and potentially secondary bacterial infections. And we call this flea allergy dermatitis, or FAD. And the important thing to remember with flea allergy dermatitis is that only a small number of fleas can trigger really extensive skin damage in these, in these pets. Fleas can also cause anemia. So when a flea takes a blood meal, um, they ingest obviously a small amount of blood, but where there's an infestation um, and a lot of feeding going on, um, this can have a bigger impact. And we particularly see this in small puppies and also kittens. And this is because they have a small volume of blood. Fleas can also act as transmitters of other parasites and also bacteria. So the tapeworm Dipalidium caninum spends part of its life cycle in the flea. So if a dog or a cat ingests an infected flea, that tapeworm can then enter their digestive, um, digestive tract. The bacteria Bartonella hensley can also be transmitted by fleas to cats. And although we don't see a huge problem with this in cats, the, the, the bigger problem occurs when um, uh, the cat either bites or scratches a human or their saliva comes into contact with a, a wound or a scratch on a human. And this then causes a disease called Bartonellosis or also known as cat scratch disease. And this often causes flu-like symptoms, which can be particularly bad in immunocompromised people. So um, that's, that's the problems that fleas can cause. So now let's have a look at the flea life cycle. So the most common flea um, that infests dogs and cats is that actually the cat flea, which is called Tenocephalides felis. So when an adult flea jumps onto a dog or a cat, um, it, the first thing it does is to take a blood meal once it's had this blood meal, it then starts producing eggs within um, a period of 24 hours. Now, um, the thing with fleas is that they produce huge numbers of eggs in a very short period of time. So a female flea can produce up to 50 eggs in a day, which means hundreds of, flea, um, hundreds of eggs in a week and um, up to 2000 eggs in, a, in their lifetime. And so you can see how flea infestations can build up so quickly. So once the flea eggs have been laid on the pet, they then fall off into the environment. So flea eggs can be found anywhere that the pet has access, access to. So that's the home, but also not forgetting areas like the garage, the car, the garden. So the egg then hatches um, and a, a larvae um, develops. And this can take up to one to five days. 
Now, the important thing to remember with larvae is that they hate the light. And so when they hatch out of the egg, they wiggle down into the carpets or under the skirting boards um, to, get as, um, to get as far away from the light as they can. So at this stage, the larvae then develop through three different life stages, and then they form this cocoon around them, um, at, um, at which stage they become a flea pupae. And this process takes up to 14 days. Now, flea pupae are extremely hardy, and you, you could say they're a bit like a nuclear bunker because it's very difficult for, for anything to pre penetrate that protective outer layer. So with pupae, not only are they often found in really difficult to get to places like deep in the carpets, but this outer layer also means that they can't be killed by household sprays. And we'll come on to that again later. So under ideal conditions, um, flea pupae will hatch in about eight to 10 days. So this means that the flea, the whole flea life cycle from eggs to egg laying adult can take um, as little as two weeks. But under the um, under non ideal conditions, um, it, the flea pupae can take a lot longer to hatch, um, in which case the, um, the whole cycle can take a lot longer than this. So what are those ideal conditions that make the flea pupae hatch? Well, basically it's anything that suggests there's a host around. So that tends to be these three things, temperature increase, vibrations, or a carbon dioxide increase. At this point, I also wanted to mention about the pupil window effect. So as I said, the pupae um, hatch under ideal conditions, um, hatch best under ideal conditions, which can take weeks or months usually, but can occasionally take much longer than this, sometimes even up to a year. So um, in an infested house, it can take, um, the owner will continue to see fleas until all of those pupae have hatched. So that could be potentially up to a year later. So it may be helpful to explain this to owners so that they, um, they are aware that even though they're treating their pet, they may continue to see um, fleas until all those few, um, flea pupae have hatched. So as you can see from the life cycle, there's a huge number of eggs, larvae and pupae in the environment. And actually this accounts for 95% of the total flea population. So when you see an adult flea on a cat or a dog, um, this actually only accounts for 5% of the total flea population. So you can see that that adult flea is just the tip of the iceberg. So what advice can we give to owners about treating and preventing flea infestations? Well, there are three important points that we should be discussing with owners, and they are treating the pet, managing the home environment, and preventing reinfestation. So I'll go through each of these points now. The first step is treating the pet. And to do this, we use a product called an adulticide, which is basically any product that kills adult fleas. So by killing these adult fleas, um, we're stopping the irritation and the itchiness that the flea bites cause, but importantly, we're also breaking the flea life cycle. And so we're stopping eggs being produced and therefore stopping eggs entering the environment. Some products also contain insect growth regulator, also known as IGR. And this also helps to um, reduce environmental contamination because it stops the development of flea, eggs and larvae. And finally, it's important to recommend that all pets in the household are treated, not just those pets that are showing obvious signs of infestation. For this whole step to be successful, it's really important that the owner um, applies or administers the product correctly. So we can really help owners here by giving clear instructions um, and potentially also um, demonstrating how to administer or apply the product ourselves. So the second step is managing the home environment. 
So I would definitely be recommending using a, a flea spray to kill the eggs and larvae in the environment. It's important to make sure the owner understands fully how to use the flea spray and also that they focus on um, areas that the larvae may be hiding, so especially anywhere, any cracks and crevices. It's also important to remember to treat any area that the pet has access to. So these can be slightly less obvious areas like the garage or the car. And as we mentioned earlier, flea pupae um, can't be killed by flea sprays, the flea spray. But there are other things owners can be doing um, to help with this. So either by physically removing them or by encouraging the flea pupae to hatch. So hoovering is a really important thing to do. Not only will it um, physically remove um, the pupae or some of the pupae and the flea life, other, other immature flea life, like the flea life stages, um, but also the warmth and the vibrations will encourage the flea pupae to hatch. And it's important to remind owners not just to do carpeted areas, um, but that um, all, all rooms that the pet has access to need to be hoovered. And this should also include any soft furnishings um, and under furniture as well. We, can, we should also be recommending that owners wash any bedding at 60 degrees C, as this will also um, help to remove, though, physically remove those immature life stages. So as well as hoovering and washing, um, there are a few other things we can do. So we, it's, we can um, put the heating on in the house and we can also put damp towels onto warm radiators as both of these will encourage pupae to hatch. And lastly, we can um, continue to allow pets to have access to all the rooms that they normally have access to as the presence of them in that room um, will encourage the, the pupae to hatch. And then the final step is preventing reinfestation. And actually, these are the steps that we'd also be talking to owners about um, to prevent an infestation happening in the first place. So um, these are um, important points to remember. The first is that we treat the pet um, with an appropriate adulticide and also that we treat all the pets in the household. The second is that we provide continuous cover. So we try to treat the pet regularly um, and at the appropriate interval. So that, and we do this to stop the fleas producing eggs. Because we know that any gap in treatment, no matter how small, um, can increase the likelihood of an infestation happening. Um, because as we discussed earlier, a huge number of eggs can be produced in a very small time period. And the final point is that pets need to be treated the whole year round um, because we know that fleas are active throughout the year. And finally, we want to talk about what else can we do to make it easy for owners? So the first thing we can do is get them signed up to reminder systems so that they, um, get, uh, that they give their pet their treatment regularly and at the right interval. We can also sign them up to health plans as this will make the whole process easier for them um, and again keep them treating their pet regularly. And finally um, we can support owners by good communication so making sure they really understand the importance of regular flea treatment um, in preventing the development of flea infestations. And it's also really important to um, manage expectations with owners um, um, as that will really help them if they're having to deal with a flea infestation. So I hope you've enjoyed the um, webinar today on ferocious fleas. If you'd like any further information about fleas, then please do visit the Bowringer Academy at www.bowringer-academy.co.uk. We have had a couple of questions come in and uh, I'll just go through these now. And if anybody has any more as we're, we're going along, please feel free to add those in. So the question I did have was um, how to improve client compliance. And it was great actually, because as that question came in, it did come up in the video, but just to kind of 
repeat and add in a couple of extras that I have found to be useful myself. Um, education and awareness are really important um, with regards to client compliance. So if they understand it and if they understand the reason behind what you're doing and why prevention is better than cure, um, it always tends to walk hand in hand with good compliance and also start young. So begin at the puppy parties or the kitten parties. And uh, I know that some clinics would give a free sample or they would encourage the, the client to begin straight away with prevention. Um, health, health schemes and plans. So signing clients up to health schemes and plans does work well. And then their, their flea prevention will be posted out to them or um, they'll get certain reminders sent out to them every month, which is wonderful. And then just making it as easy as possible for your clients, I find is really helpful. So whether that is they have to bring them in and, and have the, the, their treatment put on for them or administered for them, whatever works for them and whatever is easiest, I tend to find does, does work really well. Brilliant. Thank you, Louise. Um, I will jump in and um, ask the next question that we've had. So um, again, Louise, perfectly placed from an education background to hopefully be able to help with this question. So um, any tips for SBNs who are learning parasite life cycles for exams? My, the first thing that came to mind was actually these webinars. I think they'd be really <laughs> useful if you sign up for every single one of these. There's a life cycle. So I, I think and uh, these are you can access the recordings if I'm right for yes. a little while. I think that'd be really, really useful for revision because the diagrams were really good. Uh, also, whatever treatment you're using in practice, so whatever company you go with and who they will, they, they have great um, revision tools and guides if you speak to your rep. So whoever's supplying you with your, your flea and tick control um, and your wormers, do have a chat with them because they do often provide students with some good revision materials and some really nice visuals and posters. And I always found it was nice to have a poster stuck up on the wall at home when I was studying and just having a look at it and reminding myself and writing it out. And the books are great, but you know, the reps will supply you with some lovely learning tools if you ask. That's great. Thank you, Louise. Um, I think that's actually all the questions we've had. Um, if anyone has any, as we're starting to close down the webinar, please feel free to, to pop these in. Um, so I'd just like to say really a big thank you to, to Louise for being on hand to chair tonight's session um, and also to Sally Edith-Bates from uh, Bowring at Ingelheim for um, providing the session this evening. Um, so as Louise mentioned this, mentioned, this session has been recorded um, so it will be available via the BVNA website uh, very shortly after this event. Um, and as Sally also mentioned, this is the first of seven of these uh, parasite control webinars that are delivered by Boehring Ingelheim. Um, so details of all of these um, upcoming in the series can be found on the BVNA website as well. So um, thank you very much. I hope you found uh, this webinar useful and we look forward to seeing you at another one in the future. So take care. Bye for now. <laughs>